Hello, everybody. Hope you guys are all doing well. I'm pretty excited about this Bible. Um, I just got it yesterday and went through it, so I want to go through it with you. This might be something you're interested in. And uh, to be honest with you, I'm super pleased with it. I, you know, I, I thought maybe it would just be another Bible on the shelf, but it, this is a really, really nice Bible. Um, I like it for a number of different reasons. So let's go through it. This is the English Standard Version of the text, the ESV Bible, with creeds and confessions in true tone black. So this Bible by Crossway um, comes in three different styles, models, if you will. Uh, the true tone black, which is what this one is. We'll pull it out in just a second. There is a true tone, uh, like a leather over board. I think that it's leather, leather over board. So it's a hardcover version and it's about $10 less. This really isn't an expensive Bible. And there is a goat skin. So the goat skin uh, is a little more expensive, of course. And this Bible's so nice that, to be honest with you, I kind of want to see it in goat skin. Because uh, the other goat skin Bibles I have, are they're just premium leather and quality Bibles. Uh, this is a very quality Bible, but I don't know. I just kind of want to feel the goat skin. Anyway, um, it comes with this, this nice uh, slip cover. And that's why I decided to not get the hardcover. This is pretty much going to be more or less a, a Bible that stays at my house. I don't think that I will be taking it a whole lot of places. Um, and I do have a plan for it, of course, and I will tell you what that is at the end. So, uh, but, you know, I was worried if I put it on my shelf, it's, this end up getting all bent up if it's, you know, sitting... And I found out that it, it comes with a slip cover, so it can live in there, and I'm pretty excited about that. Otherwise, I would have gotten the hard cover. So this is, again, the ESV text, and it comes with creeds and confessions. So there is a list on the back of the features, 10-point type, uh, font type, and you know what? I love the font type. We'll open it up and take a look at that. And these are the creeds and confessions that it comes with. And then there's just a little bit about the Bible. So let's get the box out of the way and get down to the meat and potatoes. So this True Tone Black, um, it, it really is pretty soft. It's not quite as soft as a goat skin is gonna be. Um, but you know what, I have no complaints. It, it feels really nice uh, in my hand. I'm, I'm an adult male, I always kind of give you the hand test. Let me see if I have a ruler here and uh, we'll show you the sizes. So we're looking at about six and a quarter by about nine and a half by about one and a half. Okay. So, it, you know, it's not, it really is not a bad size Bible. If you wanted to use this as your primary text, you, you could, I, I wouldn't have a problem carrying this around on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, it's bigger than the one I carry because I carry the, the Cambridge Pitt Minion, right? Um, but there's the spine, of course, Holy Bible, and these raised ridges are really nice. This is, I believe, the first Bible that I have, believe it or not, with uh, raised ridges, and I really kind of like it. Uh, and it, with Creeds and Confessions, this is the ESV text, English Standard Version by Crossway. The front and the back are just plain, and I, I kind of like that. Sometimes some Bibles put some artwork on there, and sometimes it's really nice, but you know what? To, like, I like that it's just basic. So let's open this sucker up. It is not really lay flat after getting after getting worked in a little bit. I suppose it could be. This is let's say Second Chronicles. Let's see how far we can get. First Kings. We're still we're still laying. First Samuel. Deuteronomy. It started to lift up. So I bet you if you went a little bit further, Numbers. Yeah, we're about we're about going. So just so you know, once it gets worked in, it won't be a problem because even if I press down like this, it's so this is just a standard, um, it's a standard liner. Uh, nothing too too special or spectacular about that. And for the price point, again, this is I think forty five dollars, um, which really isn't that expensive for what I think is a super high quality Bible. You have a couple of blank pages in here, actually quite a few uh, that you could take notes if you want. Really nice presentation page. Presentation page. And you do this. This could be, a, like I said, a family Bible if you wanted to. It has some some Bibles have 
you know, marriages, births, adoptions, uh, deaths, special events in them. Some don't. Uh, this does. So if you like to keep track of that kind of stuff in your Bible, because it's a Bible that um, you are going to pass down, uh, I truly hope that my children want my Bibles uh, when I am gone and that they can be passed down. That's why I write in them and do special projects in them. And this might be a good way. Maybe you have an old family Bible sitting probably inside a cupboard or a chest, a cedar chest probably somewhere. And it's got a bunch of this information in there from two, three, four generations back when they read the Bible, you know, maybe some notes that they took and you really appreciate going through that stuff and having those lists. Well, this Bible has that for you. Um, so this is, I looked ahead of time, but printed in China. I, you know, again, there's always a little bit of scuttlebutt of, of people that like the, the text printed in China and people that don't just how it, I guess, lays out on the page. I've never really had too much trouble either way. Um, as opposed to where they printed it before, and I forget off the top of my head. But it gives you, this is the 2016 version of the text, for those of you that are going to ask. And then it gives you some basic, um, your basic table of contents, and it gives you like a preface. This is actually pretty cool. Uh, I read through some of this stuff, and the ESV gives you uh, kind of a preface to the translation. So why they translated it the way they do, what an essentially literal translation means, and of course, Soli Deo Gloria, to the glory of God alone. Then it also tells you about the features. This is kind of nice. Some Bibles don't really have that great of information on the features in the front of them, but it tells you about the cross-reference section. It tells you about the footnotes um, and kind of how they work and what you can expect in your Bible before you just dig in. All right, so let's get to the text. We'll flip open to the middle. So, well, not quite the middle. So we can see here. So the text is really pretty nice. Um, it is very readable. The 10 point font is, man, it's pleasant. I was sitting out there, this Bible showed up and I was sitting on my porch talking to my parents. We happened to be talking about Bible verses. So I opened this up and my eyes were, were just able to, to get to where it needed to be because of the size of the font and I didn't have trouble reading it at all. Um, and that's nice. The normal Bible that I read, the font is like seven or eight depending. And this is just clear and, and crisp to be honest with you. Um, it, it looks like it's line matched. It's probably hard to see. There's, there's a teeny little bit of ghosting that you're always going to see. I, I've never, I don't have a Bible that doesn't have, especially in these blank sections, no ghosting. Um, but it does look like it's line matched. And it's hard to see with the, with the camera and with the lighting the way it is. Um, but you can't really see text in the background of the text. And that's nice. Uh, what it does not have, as you can see, is a plethora of room to write. If you're a margin writer, this Bible is probably not the one for you. But if you're an underliner and a highlighter, this one might be the one for you because of the nice 10 point font. Um, it's very clear. It's very easy to read, um, in my opinion, that is. Uh, but there is not a whole lot of room in any of the margins to write if that's your thing. So let's flip to the back here. Oh, another thing that I noticed yesterday that I really like, and this is maybe, maybe a small point, maybe people don't care about it, but look. Each book, at least I looked through about 10 or 12 of them. I did not go through the entire Bible. Each book starts on its own page. Um, that might sound like a small deal and it is a small deal, but you know what? I really appreciate that. Sometimes you get them and it starts like right here. And, and I just, eh, I don't know. I don't like that. I like that it starts here. So with this Bible, you get that. Of course, uh, Crossway does their, um, does their cross references and footnotes kind of bottom right. Oh, I'm pointing to something you can't see. Cross references, footnotes, always on the bottom right, at least so far. Now let's get to the back where some extras are. Now, I will say this, as you maybe know, maybe don't know, depending on uh, whether you're a Christian or not and watching this video, but uh, the Bible, the text is inerrant and infallible in its original autographs. Um, this is a translation of that text. The people that translated the ESV 
Uh, man, the, the list is distinguished and very high quality scholars. Um, but the text is what we trust. The creeds and confessions in the back come from a long line of very smart, very uh, theologically sound individuals. But the creeds are not infallible and inerrant. Just because we stick them at the back of the Bible does not change uh, the hierarchy, shall we say. Always make sure you're going back to the text. So you get a list of abbreviations. We do get a small, um, they always give you a small like concordance. Um, and you can kind of see here, I'll leave it on the camera there for long enough for you to see if you're looking up Abraham, what that's going to look like. Give you a little bit of extra information on that person or, or whatever word you're looking for. Grace, give you some extra Bible verses on grace. Um, and it's a decent little concordance. It's, I talk about this a lot. It's it's not by any stretch of the imagination exhaustive, but it'll help. All right, so here we get to the creeds and confessions. Table of contents, so you can see the creeds and confessions. The Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed. Okay, these you're probably familiar with. Um, Athanasian Creed, Chalcedonian Definition, Osberg Confession, Belgic Confession, Articles of Religion, Canons of Dort, the Westminster Confession, the London Baptist Confession of 1689, which is uh, the, those are the two confessions I'm the most familiar with. My church, um, we go through the London Baptist Confession and, and talk about it and use it a lot. The Heidelberg Catechism and Westminster Larger and Smaller Catechism. What a cool Bible to have these things in the back. It gives you a little introduction to, uh, to the creeds and confessions and kind of just a little bit about them, why they're in there, what they're about. And you should know what they're about because again, that's the creeds are not the Bible. Creeds are not the text. You should not be relying on creeds for your salvation. We rely on Christ for our salvation. And that information is found right here. But creeds and confessions are um, things that, that have been written down over the years, decades, centuries, and millennia that um, people that have come before us, we, we stand on the shoulders of giants, as it were. People that have come before us have written down for one reason or another. And it's important to know. Uh, and these, it's, what's kind of cool is it gives you a little bit of history or information about the creed and confession. Um, just a little bit about it before it gives you the actual creed or confession or what you learn. And I'm pretty excited about this. And this will lead me to what I'm going to do with this Bible. So I, I'm going to do Westminster and um, I'm going to do Westminster and the London Baptist. But what I decided to do with this Bible, because I do projects like this and they're fun. Um, and in this Bible and this Bible alone, I'm going to go through Westminster and London Baptist with either two different color highlighters or two different color. I use Pigma Micron 005 pens, two different colors of those. And as you see in these, this is the Westminster Confession. It gives you the scripture references. So this is what we believe. This is where we got that from in the text. I thought that it would be fun for me to go through these and study these confessions and let it drive me to the text, which is what it's supposed to do. Um, because we get these things from the truth of the Christian worldview. The truth of the Christian worldview is found here in the Word of God. <laughs> this is the literal Word of God. It is worthy of study um, and of memorization and uh, to help us understand the character of God and how we are to follow Him. Um, and I thought it would be fun to go through and, and go through the Westminster and London, at least for starters, and just underline all these passages and give them a little bit of extra study because each one of these points have these there. Um, and so when I'm reading through the Bible or when I'm reading through a section that I'm studying and Luke or Matthew or whatever, or Timothy, my eye is drawn to that little section and, oh, hey, this is a uh, part of the Westminster Confession. Or this is part of the London Baptist Confession. And this is where they got it from. And this is why we believe and profess those things. If you believe and profess those things. This is London Baptist. It gives you all the articles, the communion of saints and whatnot. So, um, 
At the end, there are a couple maps. There we go. And they're really nice maps. You know, the maps, the, the quality of the maps have gotten so much better in the last 30 years, in my opinion. Um, I should open some of my older Bibles and just take a look. Not that the map has changed any, but just they're just pretty and they pop and they stand out the places that you might want to see um, because sometimes those things are handy. And then in the very back, you have two blank pages. Two ribbons of uh, just moderate level quality. So you could probably replace those. It is sewn. Um, this is a sewn binding. You probably, it's somewhat hard to tell, um, but it is sewn. It is not glued and pasted. Uh, so this Bible will last you forever. There are folks out there um, on some of the Facebook pages and stuff that I'm a, a part of that are rebinders. And so I suppose if you wanted to rebind this, you could do that. Uh, this could be end up being a, an heirloom Bible for your family. If this cover ends up failing you in 20 or 30 years, you could get it uh, rebound and the actual pages and text should, um, should last you quite a while. The paper is actually pretty thick. This is not typical like super, super thin tissue paper. Uh, so I think that it'll, it'll hold up to the writing. It'll hold up to the highlighting um, very nicely. And it's also easy to flip through. Uh, so you don't, <laughs> sometimes it's some of these papers they're so thin that you worry about ripping them when you're reading through. So that is uh, my review of the English Standard Version Bible with creeds and confessions in true tone black. Um, I will leave a like an Amazon link down in the comments, but it runs about 45 bucks for this one. The, the hardcover is about 35 the goat skin is about 185 all i think all definitely worthy of your dollar um because this is this really truly is a nice bible and i like it a little more than i thought that i was going to because it's so easy to read um and and so easy to, to make my way through hope this has helped you guys if you're looking for something like that if you have any questions of course leave them down in the comments uh, if we want to go through some creeds and confessions, because this is the first time you've ever heard of creeds and confessions, and you want to know a little bit more about that, let me know, and maybe we'll make some videos and talk about the creeds and confessions and what those are. I hope you guys have a great day.